All right, folks, uh, welcome to the third episode of Every Day is a School Day, or in this case, it's Every Day is an Old School Day with these two legends. Um, it is. Welcome onto the show, DJ X-Ray and DJ Gleave Dobbin from the sunny shores of Northern Ireland. Yo. <laughs> um, first question, boys, this is something I just, I don't know. When did you two first meet or cross paths? Uh, uh, I first seen Dave. Uh, I, 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 I've never played the trombone in my life. Has he not? <laughs> we need to tell the truth here, X-Ray. I suppose there it was. <laughs> Listen, true stories are like Rimmon. Trombone. The saxophone. No, <laughs> I don't like, but no, it's a... Ray, well... Um, and then you wasn't a lad, you mean... I was a belly. Well, I, I was met, that first I, never meeting, I was, uh, was with that. Then you used to get rid of the very short. Remember? Um, yes. When you prepared the worry, see you one time. Uh, yes, yeah, on that day. Thursday or Friday we used to come down That's here right, for all your all your releases then. And uh, yeah, oh, they start banging on them for you, You used to get <laughs> some tunes out of your shop. Hell yeah, uh, it, was, it was good night. I, I don't know if I'm a bit more from Friday. Um, used to go to Liverpool by the the just and then since I have that, but but um, as you say, you were about twenty or thirty copies, and boom, they were gone. Um, then they said you were with the testers and stuff like that. Which is maybe wait one copy and I'm not gonna do it. I'll take that. You know. Yeah. I, that was uh, I I was there thirty three years ago. Crazy enough. Hard to believe, I'm not. So what's your version of uh meeting X ray Gleave? I since well, he made his I, up. I, I don't think I can remember that name <laughs> Kelly's all the same. But um I def, definitely right round the DMCs is when whenever I kinda of found out who Ray was. You know what I mean? Um, in that early nineteen ninety one, and then we were just constantly bumping into each other. I love all this the from, I from like, like Street illegal raves to <laughs> <laughs> illegal raves to, to everywhere, like you know. <laughs> but like throughout the course of of us being there, we've always placed in each other uh, somewhere yeah. along the line. And we like, yeah, uh, like we right and you sort of... you've always got one your hand. I'm going to need to buy you one. Well, there's a new house up right now from Gerald Andrew, if you see me. Well, there you go. There you go, right. Okay. <laughs> but there's your tail flap. I've got this. Can you follow me with hair? <laughs> plenty, of room, plenty of room in my forehead, to be fair. <laughs> it's the same so, old time, like. <laughs> it's creeping back, isn't it, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really having a full head of hair there. Oh, it was enough. a turkey holiday you went on, Rectory, wasn't it? Well, definitely be sloppy teeth on. Don't I'm missing a few. So back, um, um, so let's let's go back then, back to the, I suppose, was it the late eighties? Whenever you both sort of get into DJing, or what sort of year was it? I well, it, it would have been for me. Um, I'm still at school, obviously. Um, and and. The brother Mark, he's 11 years older than me, and him and Robbie had the record shop in Lauren, sounds good. So um, Robbie had his vinyl decks down in there, so I just was coming down after school and locking myself in. Shop was closed and all, I was still there practicing, you know, so that would have Point been... Like, eight. I would say first, second year I would start, I started on them like, so it was. Um, I was just lucky because... The record shop was there, all the records were there. Robbie was going away to like the European DMCs and bringing, I can remember him bringing home like, um, Found Love and, and Brazil and, it, you know, Spectrum and, and mm -hmm. Pedro and Frog just let go and all these, mm -hmm. all these records. And he, he just come home with like 10, 10 or 20 copies of them for, for the record shop. And I was like blown away with these track tech. It was just like, because at that stage, it was, your glorified discos 
you know, and then you had a you had that bit of a, an underground scene in, in Belfast. I was I was too young to tap into the early Homer McCready's like the, the star hairdressers and, and all those kind of like a legal warehouse thing that I was hearing about just through Mark and Robbie, you know what I mean? Um Yeah. But like I didn't really start DJing out and I think the first thing I ever done really was I got I blagged on at the Ulster Hall. Um, at, a, at a gig called Earth, and that was nineteen ninety. Like I shouldn't even have been there. Like, but uh, uh, I just went. I I can do it. I think it was probably the only super one in the place. Like, was Robbie Robbie Nelson? Like, would, he he was probably one of the pioneers to start the whole scene in Belfast, uh, wouldn't he? Uh, been hundred percent. The way, hundred percent. Yeah, with, with, without a doubt. Like, like I, you know, he was the first guy I ever come across that had a, had a say sales like, you know, there were aliens yeah. of people, like, you know, um, but he definitely was instrumental in the whole thing. Ooh, you yeah. know, he really pushed it forward, you know, and, and for him, like, like I, I can remember going to the, the Hellsman on a Monday night, like, what was I, third year or something? You know, I shouldn't even yeah. be there, but I was allowed to go because Robbie was driving, you know what I mean? Um, I just used to go. Aye, I, I just used to go and listen, listen to the music and 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 hear what was being played. And then you even had you guys could because because music was it was it was scarce. You know, people didn't have it right. And then you would got people coming down with like I don't know a, a copy of Freaky Dreamer or a copy of that oh, or a copy of that and handing it over to Robbie. And him playing oh, yeah. it in the club, it was wow. unbelievable. Oh, yeah. You know, because really not it. everybody had it. You know, somebody had been mm. to Manchester or been to London and got this exclusive record that you couldn't buy in Northern Ireland. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. so, so it was, it was, it was unbelievable. But back then, you know, the track spot, they had shelf life. You know, if you had an exclusive track, and Ray, you're the exact oh, yeah. same. Yeah. If you yeah. have an exclusive track, you could have played that track for a year, solid. No problem. Totally. People wouldn't have got bored of it because they didn't no. have it on their phones. They didn't yeah. have access to it on their Spotify playlist. They didn't and have, you know, they, 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 they didn't have it. So you got shelf life out of everything. Now tracks so can come and go in a week's time or two weeks' time. I forgot about it. You know what I mean? Three months. Month, yeah. You know what I mean? I said it's very rare. So... Well, go ahead. Please, the kisses. Please, please, correct me saying that because, um, I remember Robbie um, playing the tracks. That's maybe the first time I've ever seen a DJ actually mixing two mixing songs. Tracks. And one of yeah. them was uh, Black Box Red on Time, and the other one was uh, Type of Sonic, but what channel? And what he was just doing was trying to like, dun 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 on the top of Red on Time. Such a spoiled then. You know, this is you useful. Have, you, have to, you, know, you have to remember there was no there was no YouTube videos or there was there was nobody uh, yeah. setting that there was nobody setting that pace. You know what I mean? Okay. That it, it's it was so forward thinking, it was unbelievable yeah. and people seem to forget that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like like anybody that was at in tracks weren't going flying over to Liverpool to go clubbing for the weekend no. or to London. You were you were a home bird yeah. and you stayed you That's stayed it. here, yeah. you know what I mean? So, so I you appreciate the local DJs more. Totally, hundred percent. Well, what well, what we all didn't realize back then was we were the headliners. You know what I mean? Yeah. Getting paid oh, yeah. up, but now, <laughs> but now you know, headliners come on and stupid things like. No, no. Remember, like uh, standing there, and I've got a vision recollection of like one day in uh, Fresh Underground Records in ninety two, where. There was you and Marty C standing over here, and there was Colin Bass and Paul P, and there was Robbie, Glenn Malloy, Ben Man, and somebody else. I think it might have been uh, a guy from Ballymena, another guy from Ballymena on this side, like, and I was going, wow. Not that everybody's standing no. behind me here, you know. And at that stage, I was getting all the students <laughs> from uh, Three Beat Liverpool, I used to go over there. Uh, and buy them, and then they'd be sent them over in bulk, and uh, you know, thirty at a time, and whatever. But I, I was going to be shocked. We, we'd done it all well with the graffiti and all. Um, I don't know if uh, you can mind good. the graffiti walking up and it and all. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. blasting a, a hole in the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then and then then, then just plasterboarding over it, spray painting it. You know, Marty Rice and uh, Conor McGill actually done them paintings. Well, you know, Marty, 
and Connery. Oh, I know Marty. Connery owns Hayden and um, Bala and Corey in here. And Marty owns a, 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 a what do you call it? Picasso. The tattoo Marty. player. Yeah, and Bala and uh, Belfast. But I, uh-huh. uh, and they were the guys that were designing at that time, you know, and uh, <laughs> as I say, that's, um, that's my, possibly the second time I met you, you know. I. Uh- I know, and then we just sure we just bumped into each other non-stop after that. Over the years, it was, I, uh, it was rave tastic in them days, like wasn't it? Well, it's just the high from Sam Mills to Anna Skillen to you know, that Don uh, um, all know, over the place, it's man. It's good now. It's good now to see the uh, Belfast old school page putting things up, you know, of old flares and uh, stuff. Uh, Isn't that? Great? I I think. I think I think that's absolutely fantastic the Isn't way that, they're doing it, and I'm seeing flares that I. I, I haven't seen, seen in years. Yeah, even ones you've never seen existed, you know. Um, I know, totally. And, and, and uh, clippings, clippings of like, newspapers and stuff, you know, from way back then too, you know. And it's, it's, and it's, yeah. all, it's a nostalgic buzz because I don't know about yourself, you must be 39, I'm touching 50 now. I'm actually, I'm 51. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it is, it's, it's a whole nostalgic process that, you know, it's embedded in people's minds, no matter what actually era it started to what it is now, you know. Um, well, it, 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 you're saying that to, to what it is now. I'm hearing, I'm hearing loads and loads of underground DJs dropping remixes and re-edits oh. of stuff that we had played back in 1991, 92. It's oh. colossal, like. All, all the keys have been played, all the rest have been played. You know, the, yeah. I, I, I just think now that Without getting into like modern day producers or or, or whatever, well, it's, he, more, it's more a thing about image now and it's to- about your music. Totally. You know? um, but but what you what you have to remember is back then those tunes and those tracks that, that were timeless were mm-hmm. made by proper musicians. Oh yeah. Right, yeah, guys, no, no, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't some wee bloke that, that is a, a crack copy of Abel and sitting in the house and he's rinsing out tech house, you know, track. Yeah. It, 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 it was maybe proper, <laughs> proper, proper musicians in, in, a, oh, yeah. in a studio that, that, that wasn't wasn't digital. So oh, people totally. were sitting at home on their laptops make, making yeah. tracks, same things. Like. Well, 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 you, you look at, for instance, uh, Elvio Morato. Um, he, he, if you look back at his discogs, he was doing stuff in the seventies and the eighties, yeah. you know. And then in the nineties, it became Ramirez. It became Dilemma. Ramirez. It, it became it became uh, uh, what do you, like, call it? you know it, like it, the, five or ten different aliases, possibly more. Yeah, you know, like you see the, the the Ramirez stuff. If you listen to the Ramirez stuff now, the, the production on it. The yep. production on it is second to none. Totally. Like, it would stand up against anything you made now. Like. The, the Italians and the Germans were sensational production. Ah, Way back then. Right. They, they, were, that, they were the guys. Light years ahead. Oh, totally. You know, you, when you see something like uh, Media Records, recorded at Media Records uh, uh, Milan, yeah, you knew you were getting coy. So you people like uh, Elvio Morato, who... who who was so many pseudonyms over the years? You know, he, he started off in the seventies, the eighties, in the night became Ramirez, a dilemma, and, and so many, so many pseudonyms in, in the nineties that it, it was unreal. And then he done the whole later stuff in the two thousands as well, um, more the Cascada kind of stuff as well. So he's moved on, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, as you say, leave there. Um, these were made the proper musicians. You know, maybe proper musicians, and, that, totally. and I, I think that's where it stands to be timeless, and that's why there's so many of those kind of underground, cool underground DJs are re- doing re edits all that stuff because uh, yeah. you know you have to remember, like we've been in this game how long? Like over thirty 36 years. Thirty six years. Thirty six years. I've been this year. Nineteen eighty. So it started for me. So, so the the kids now, they don't know those tracks. No, those yeah. Are, no, it's like it's like you know, yeah. it's like brand new to them. Like, well, again, that's that's where maybe sometimes we have the whenever we're, we are playing gigs, we've got the upper hand, you know, because we are, are musically educated and all that. And maybe maybe some of them still, you know, I know loads loads of young guys grew up listening to my tapes that are out there now doing well. Yeah, 
you yeah. know, uh, and I just decided to say, oh, wow, that's fair, fair play to him. Um, but well, it, it's, like, it's like me in the, in the, doing the, the DJ courses and the IDJ. Mm. I've, I've got guys coming through that are flying. Like, you're, uh, yeah. I mean, you're, you're a wee guy, um, Ollie, uh, there's a wee guy that was coming to me. He's playing on Ibiza. I've got the two Symmetrics guys that done my, my course, my <laughs> music production course and Boys Model. They're flying like that. They are flying. All like brilliant. Them. Yeah, totally. Absolutely flying. And, it's good, it's and they good, were, they, good they were just two, two normal lads that, that had no music production experience. Yeah, um, totally. There was, there, was, there was decks in the school. They didn't have decks at home. And they just took to it. You know what I mean? They, they, yeah. they get involved with the Northern Ireland Trans family after that. And things over, over lockdown, things just blew up for them. All the videos. I've, I've, so, I've, actually, I've actually seen, I've been following them actually. I met them actually at the Connect Festival. I remember we done one a lot of years ago. Over, uh, Two lovely just lads. After lockdown. Ah, dead on as fuck. Like, excuse for the uh, first. Curtis Lager and David McCurry. Uh, Aye, two lovely lads. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and they, they even come back in the boys model, the, the school I'm still teaching in, and, 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 and speak to the students and, and say to them, look, look Give lads, we were sitting in them chairs just like you. See, look, look, yeah. look, look, what, look what we've achieved now. Like, you know, so it's brilliant. Is that good? Good testimonials. Uh, oh, totally. Ah, it's fantastic. Totally. Uh, and they're they signed the Atlantic Records, aren't they? Yep, yep, they are, which is unbelievable. Like, when you look at Atlantic Records, <laughs> Sister Sledge, you know. I know, wow. massive, you know, just, just, massive just, artist. Just to take it back to that, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, but I, there's I, a great just, buzz about them and, and a great following there at the minute. Like, they've got it going great, on. Great to see. Fair play to them. Um, it, it's good to see, and hopefully in fucking 30 years' time, they'll be doing the same. Ah. Uh, you know, Brilliant. But it, it's, great, it's great there for Northern Ireland because you've you've Dara and you've Shugs and you've you've that whole kind of trance kind of that mm. kind of donkey kind of sound. It's all flattened at the minute, like it's it's international, and that, and you know. What, so that's that's what the kids are into, you know. That and again, it's all about the youth. Ah, totally. When you think about it, you know, it's all about the youth, and and the, and you can't take it away from the youth because at one time we were the youth. Totally. Totally, you know, and, and people a, probably look at us as if we had, if we had two heads. Listen, that sort of music, four, like four horns, four horns. Four uh, horns. Uh, <laughs> <we're forever. laughs> well, that's where I want to take this conversation now, lads. Back to your youth, um, and how you boys, um, you know, got started. Like that's, like, um, Cleve, yeah, tell me because you you had the record shop in Lauren too. So tell us more about that. Yeah, well, I, well, yeah, it was it was Mark and Robbie. Robbie Nelson had the record shop. Um, they were obviously a lot older than me. And, um, I just there was a set of SLs in it, Technics SLs, and I just come down to school. They were silver. Oh, lethal. So they were, <laughs> and uh, sure. I just I just used to come down and just lift loads of records out of the racks and and mix away, and that's kind. I just kept my head down and, and practice and practice and practice. And that's then what took me to the DMCs in, in 1991. It kind of worked out. But then, then it was a real, it was a real strange time because there was this, there was this big rave thing coming in. It, it obviously came in the end of Northern Ireland slightly later on the mainstream. It was, it was bubbling away in the underground there, like late 80s and, and with the Hummer McCready and, and, and stuff like that. Alan Sims and all the, doing the stuff at the art college and, and stuff Brian like Burns. that. Bram on tracks, you can't forget about Bram Erna. He tells a good joke. Um, <laughs> now, but it it was all kind of bubbling up. But it, whenever it came to the DMCs, to me, the DMCs and the way I looked at all the videos whenever I was really young, it was a hip hop competition. You know, it was a turntable com competition. But yeah. in, in Northern Ireland, it was slightly different because this whole rave, wave was coming through the whole thing. So I kind of. I was playing like hip hop tracks and rave tracks and house tracks and, and there was all sort. It was a whole mismatch, but you were able to get away with that in Northern Ireland because it, it it was just slightly different. You know what I mean? But whenever I went to the mainland then for the for the UK finals, it was full on hip hop. Like they, yeah. they weren't yeah, they weren't scratching. getting DJ eight featuring Steffi. You know, right, okay. <laughs> they or Airport eighty nine or anything like that. They weren't getting that at all because it was predominantly hip hop. It was but, it was but proper. Again, that, but that showed our, our sort of um, own spec on things as well. Um, oh, hundred percent. Because I, I I remember well. I used to sneak into the art college when I was really really young because I told because I told my mum and dad that I wanted to pick art. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> I had to go and mingle with the urchins and with my dad being a sign writer, he was all up for that. So I, I said, like, if you want me to, if you want me to pick art and skill, so do it as, as a subject. I'll need to go and mingle with the urchins, like. Let alone did did they know it was an absolute full on rave? You know what I mean. But <laughs> in, 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 in the early days, you had you had loads of ones that were in the hip hop. You could see them at the art college in them early days. There was a real mix. There was a real blend uh, right across the two scenes. You know what I mean. And then obviously it just kind of took off, and in, in a fashion that none of us expected at all. Like, but mm, but yeah. back then, back then, I thought I thought that that scene was only going to last the way the mods did or you know rockers did or the skinheads did and it was going to timeless i it was it was just going to fade out but here we are talking about it and it's still yeah. thriving and and venues are getting packed out and stadiums and freaking festivals you know all these years yeah. later so it's great to see so me um Clive, you mentioned robbie nelson there would, would he have been sort of the your biggest influence or the guy you sort of looked up to the most back then? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. He was, he, as, as Ray said, um, he was the first guy I kind of really seen properly mixing, you know, mm. that's what on a video VHS tape, you know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. he, was, he was the guy that, that I seen putting tracks together and making, doing live remixes and re-edits of things on on the fly, which was unbelievable. Mm. It just blew my mind. And once once I seen that, that was that was me kind of hooked. You yeah. know, he kind of showed me the ropes, how to do it, and then kind of left me to it. You know, uh, a lot away. of pra- a, a lot of practice and from all of us in them days because you'd you'd nobody, you know, you'd no YouTube tutorials or DJ academies you could go on and learn from or anybody even teaching in them days, you know, mm-hmm. so you had, you had to learn your craft you yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You had to learn, you had to learn your craft yourself. You had to learn your records inside out because mm-hmm. if you were going to stand up there in front of hundreds of people, they were expecting you not to make a car crash. Once mm-hmm. you start making car crashes, you, you're, <laughs> you're not going to get rebooked. You're not going to well, sell don't any tapes. Car crashes, big man. I'm still making them. <laughs> 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 I should just Ray. change my name and DJ Car Crash. <laughs> DJ Car Crash. But like like now, I like I I I can I can teach an eight or ten year old how to mix tracks and, mm-hmm. and out of out of, out of a DJ lesson, they'll get a mix at the end of that. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Because it's, cause it's all it's all, you know, through record box, it's all digital, digital. Credited, you mm-hmm. just set the grids up, it's easy right. enough. But back then, like it was a it was a different story. I actually, I had a, I had a class in, in one of my schools there a couple of years ago, and they were all getting a bit cocky. They were going, "I, I know, I'm sure this here, this here's easy." You threw the pencil. I, I brought a set of vinyls in, and they looked, <laughs> they, they looked at them like, "What the hell do you do with this here?" They had no notion, like they, couldn't, they probably couldn't, couldn't lift them. Couldn't, couldn't, they couldn't work it out. They couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, at all, like Excellent. so. It's a, it's a, it's a different ball game altogether, you know. But, but each Ray. Their own. Ray, who would you say was your sort of biggest influence back in the day? Would it have been Robbie as well, or? But Robbie did come later. Um, I was, I was talking earlier on before we got rudely interrupted by my internet connection. Um, uh. I, I was sort of brought up in the the the, the late eighties, uh, eighty eight where dance music was maybe just forming through into the charts. Um, so I had a different perspective at all. Um, I was going to places like Lacey's and Corey Inn, um, where I started there as a glass collector. And then one night the boss came up and, and put on the lighting system. It was like one of them touch panels, Cleve. You know them them touch panel ones that uh, used to have down in tracks. It's one of those sort of Martin Audio sort of um, get-ups, but... I was just walking past and seen it and just started to touch it and like the police ice come on around. Yeah, well, this is good for like, Next minute, the boss must have seen me in the camera and or, or somebody you know, said he's up there fucking about them lights and come up and goes, right, boy, hey, fuck, back down to that cloakroom there. So this was about 10 or 15 minutes before it was open. Um, and about two weeks later, um, the guy, the, the, the manager came down and says, right, that boy's not coming back up there. He's, he's finished the lighting job. A guy called Monty. I mind having this conversation with him a couple of times. Um, and basically then, it was me starting to do the lights. But 
at the stage we were still at school, and I was running about with Jason McMullen, who was one of the DJs that was uh, working in the Strand Hotel, of course, Stuart. Um, and the resident DJ in that time would have been a guy called Frankie McLaughlin um, and another guy from Derry called Harold Breenan, uh, a.k.a. Happy Harry. Um, and basically, Mike McMullen was up playing the records before him, by like Jason. And just all stuff from, like, Hamilton Bohaman to, you know, everything across the board. Um, the end of the night, you know, still back then when they were doing slow sets, you know. <laughs> the erection <Yeah>. section. <laughs> the erection section, <laughs> yeah. A chance well, that, for your dance, a hope for your group. I know, but <laughs> uh, it would have been them boys probably Barry Euler then after like I started to do um, the lights for him in February 8th, Valentine's Day. He couldn't make it because he had the flu. So the boys said, listen, he says, you already have his records there. And, you know, you just make the best of it. And I'm like, oh my God. So it was back then when I used a microphone. So um, I remember that first time a guy said to me, uh, have you any Rod Stewart? <laughs> and I just big man I don't think it so I had a look through the box and it was still standing there at the edge of the DJ box and there was no there was no like DJ box as a such there was just sort of the side of the deck and we're knocking over the right where the dance floor was so he was standing there and I was looking through looking for Rod shirt. <laughs> you know and I said don't think I have any big man he goes you're fucking dead outside <laughs> 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 so, well, I tend to, after that, not to get you know, above my station. You know what I mean? And I've always carried <laughs> Ross' shirt with me in my heart, and sang his songs. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but uh, it was then, my sister then took me to uh, tracks when I was in, uh, in, the, in the same sort of time frame. And I heard Brian Moore DJing, and Brian would have played everything, but he would have played them in sections, including the erection section. But we played all, all the indie stuff and then maybe a bit of dance stuff and then a bit of indie stuff and then the erection section and then it was all dance at the end of the night. Yeah. But it was all it was all like DMC mixes that Prime was playing because he was the, 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 the main guy from over there at that time. Um, yeah. I remember going up to him and there was a guy, Gary McLaughlin, doing the lights. And I said to him, like, what's that song there? And he was like, oh, it's a DMC mix. And Brian was giving out forms. And at that stage, I was only like fucking 15. Um, 14 possibly my sister took me there and there was a bouncer called Mickey McCafferty and he was the guy to my sister Kate he's not better than the name she was like oh Mickey please <laughs> you know what I mean? we can't get him home you know it was back, it was, that was back in the days whenever pints were 85p you, you know just <laughs> fucking cheap you would have loved that chips, Ray you know? <laughs> I never bought anything back then another Pete <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me <laughs> <laughs> um, but I and then stemmed from 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 you know from then on to like buying records from uh, Disco Magic, and then selling them around the, the record shops. Um, before I opened actually Fresh Underground. Um, but I brilliant, yeah. Speaking about mixtapes, fellas, uh, you have a fair few between yourselves. Who who Cleve? What was your first one? <laughs> I Do you remember I, it? I. I I started doing the tapes whenever I was still at school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And because, because I didn't have a job, that was the only way I was able to generate extra money to buy go and buy vinyl. Because you were you were I was spending a fortune on vinyl right. and I didn't have a job, you know what I mean? So I was just making mixtapes. I'd like I'd six of those techniques double tape machines and all week and I just made tapes as much as I could mm -hmm. and flogged them. To just yeah. so I could get money to go on go and buy what did you sell them for buy, buy, back then. Fiver. 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 I'm and genius. Ah, Fiver. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, the, the, the amount of tapes that, that went out, but but it was brilliant there because because we didn't have the internet and didn't have Mixcloud and SoundCloud and all these streaming services, mm -hmm. that that was our that that's how we got yeah. our, got our got our name out. You know and what it, I mean? And, and, and every tape you sold, he copied it for somebody else, and then he copied it for somebody else, and he uh, and he copied it for her. Vroom, and blah, blah, blah. Vroom, 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 vroom. Aye, what because the juice? because my tapes were all numbered, and I still get people coming up to me at old school nights going, "Glee." <laughs> Seven and, and I have a clue. I have a notion. And, and then, and then I would get, I would get people, I would get people freaking messaging me on Facebook or, or Instagram, going, 
You see on Glee 14, what is the track at, at, at 47 minutes? Oh, I haven't a clue. Don't uh, speak yeah. to McGrew. <laughs> we will Ray, what was your master. Ray, what was your well, first tape? I think maybe I was doing like tapes back whenever the Fresh Underground was going, but God knows where they're at now, you know. The first one I probably done with Intelligence was probably 93, and it was called Follow Me. Um, and then I think we'll only do like 30 sort of tapes with them. Um, whenever they were sort of putting a lot of, you know, production into the tapes and making them, you know, covers and inlays, cards and whatever, and posters along with them. And, um, that was in 93 when I sort of met Paul through, Paul and Hector through the record shop. Um, and they were sort of taking me down to the places like the Rafo and Sturban and places like that before pre-intelligence yeah. days. Um, and then maybe the, in the around the end of 93, they, te- they, they sort of turned it into intelligence and made a more sort of bigger, like, like a brand. By merchandise yeah. and, you know, all, all, all the rest of the stuff. Like it. jackets. Jackets, <laughs> jackets and tapes, I and, uh, you know, Cle- I mean, Cleve coming down to play a couple of nights in Marshalls of Sam Mills where Carl Cox played. Um, you know, yeah. they, they were, like, like Cox, they couldn't even fit in the DJ box, hardly. You know what I mean? And it was <laughs> the two decks were here. We had a mixer with no crossfader, just up, just three, four up and down feeders, no crossfader at all, like. And a the deck then sitting on top of the amplifier. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, man, it's just boom, boom, boom. Oh, here we go. Big Pete's gone now. Uh... Uh, like, no, but I can keep keep talking, boys. Keep talking. Uh, I can see, see this. Like... Right, so yeah, so we'd, <laughs> we'd done the Just... well, uh, yeah. That's basically from then we sort of like they were doing the harmony nights, and that's how you sort of get into Kelly's. Um, in September, did you ever play Kelly's together? Did you ever play yeah, Kelly's together? We did. I, we played oh, a couple we did. together. Aye, we did. Aye. Aye. We'll, we'll get four, I've got photographs of the two in the same night. Probably people will pop them up here now, here and here, because I'll send them to you. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, we was... were a lot skinnier. Totally. <laughs> totally. You look back at them <laughs> days now, you know, and you say to yourself, wow, what an experience that was, you know. I know. Um, you know, you could have went, you could have went out any night of the week from a Monday to a Sunday, you know. Um, and, and there was, was always something on. Always something on, wasn't there? Um, right. Monday was the Hells one. I don't, Hells, I don't yeah. know about a Tuesday. Wednesday Tuesday, was Tuesday, the Tuesday, limelight. Tuesday, Tuesday, Garth to Pure down here. Monday was Tracks for us down here. And Tuesday was uh, sort of the Sea Splash. Wednesday was Kelly's. Thursday was the Strand. And then Friday and Saturday was a choice of like Nero's, Tracks, Kelly's, uh, Burberry's. Um, and what was a lot of Lacey's. There was, there was loads, you know, when that was just around the triangle. Yeah. I think there was, there was loads of maybe in Port Rush and, and the early the ladies as well with the likes of the Beachcombers and um, the Samara and where were were and tracks I, tracks didn't open up until nineteen eighty three I think Brian was telling me but he didn't take it over to about nineteen eighty seven um, as then Brian done the the whole DMC um, uh, get up mixing competition yeah. you know which. Give all the younger DJs their time, you know, a, 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 a time to, to learn the trade. And I look back at them videos, and I just go, "Wow, wasn't that brilliant that that, that was all set up and recorded?" And you know, know, you would, you, you would, you would brilliant. yeah, yeah, and you, you wouldn't <laughs> see from you know, you wouldn't see that about Rick Lane, or you know, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't, you know, or you know, somebody changing tires or a mechanic, you know, you wouldn't see that sort of. Wow, this is how you experience, you know, it's a trade because that's what it is. That's what it was back then. It's a trade, the DJ, then, you know. That was that was my first introduction. Watch seeing Glee was Glee on VHS doing the DMC mixing championships and fuck it yeah, was entertaining I mean, me. Brian, I mean, for years after brilliant. that, Brian used to play it on the big screen. You know what I mean? And, and there was Glee, there was sequel, there was was it was Marty C in it? Um, uh, Malloy, Malloy. Um, there was some big Delay, Delay. Well, Dilly wanted, wanted to be a Stakey. Stakey was in the same year I was on it. And that was 93. Yeah. Stakey's got a yeah. photograph. Robbie Nelson had to come out and turn the what I call the master up for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh my God, that's the master. You're not playing nothing out there. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought it was going one or two. <laughs> <laughs> came singing last. 
Alright, that's back in the fucking DJ box. Because <laughs> there was no backstage and tracks back then, was it? It was just like a wee side room. You know, uh, the bag two, yeah. two people filled it. And we had some great days in tracks, but who know. Tracks are yeah. brilliant. Tracks was what, my first good. introduction. So yeah, it was tracks, watching your voice. Stevie Graham was resident in it, and, and um, he was resident for 20 odd years. I know. Um, Long time. And, it, and Big Hubert. I don't know if you remember Big you Hubert. Big Hubert used to do the lights like, you know, I just yeah. still remember him and Brian Moore playing Hawaii Five O and the two of them with panels in the DJ box going do 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 a complete fucking you know, laugh and uh, and that's what like personality DJs done back then really, wasn't it, you know? Yeah. Big time. Uh, and then if there, there was a fight in the dance floor. Brian would just stop the music and goes, and every bed of roses, there's always a couple of pricks. <laughs> you know, and that's everybody's sense, and they stop fighting because the attention was all on them, you know. <laughs> or they, at the end of the night, they used to play Coronation Street <laughs> or, uh, or, or Shatem other. or something like that. Or, or it had this classical thing, I don't know what they call it, but he said, they, they, they tell every play out. I, I just they, they make them go out and, you know. I used to say down at the bottom of it, uh, as a way out, you know, this is a residential area, please be quiet. And I said it was like a fucking boxing match. It was Tracks International Kickboxing Club. All right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, again, Central, somebody put Rush back in, and again, it's like loads of testosterone, t- t- testosterone from the boat. You know, you couldn't take your testosterone out on bashing up your PlayStation 5, can you? No, you can't. No. You have to go and fight. <laughs> that's, yeah. and that's the way it was, you know. And it was all tribal. It was like Korean versus Balamina and Bushmills versus Dervik. You know. <laughs> Lauren versus Porta Ferry. <laughs> like that does all right, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, like, like you're that. talking about Port Rush there. I, I can remember, I remember going to Kelly's when, because our Mark used to DJ on tracks as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we had a got a left down one. And we had a went to, we had a went to Kelly's. And I remember going to Kelly's and, and, uh, Alan Simpson would have been DJing upstairs, DJ mm-hmm. Aluminium. And yeah. he'd have been playing all Andy stuff. But I can yeah. remember walking down into the barn for the first time ever. And there was a, there was a James Brown tribute band on. Wow. That was, that was before Hurley even yeah. started on it. Before Chris started, yeah. Uh, before Chris started, they used to do live bands on it. Because emotional remember... fish played in there. Aye. You know, the so, really but, but the guy, I can remember standing and going, Jesus, this would be great for a rave. And I then know, a few yeah. months after that, then Chris, Chris, Chris started, started it. And, 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 and that, what, started in that was the unbelievable in them early days. Like. Yeah, big time. Uh, Chris, I think, started on the 19th of January, 91. Um, and there's probably only about 20 or 30 people at it. See, about eight months later, like, that was oh, the place to go, you know. And yeah. I, I remember vaguely, I remember vividly standing in, in the, you know, there used to be a backstage, you know, where the big, there was only one light in it, it was just a big sunflower just going around, yeah. just going around. And it was just haze. There was no smoke machine, it was just haze and, and condensation the, dripping off the ceiling. But the sound was great, and it? Ah, well, uh, after after the council got their hands on it and put the limiters in, it became a wee bit more or uh, less, you know. Strip back. Um, but the atmosphere, was the atmosphere second was, and on. oh man, it was like, I'm yeah. sure you, you've experienced the same atmosphere that was up in Circus too, because that was raw uh, energy. Well, well, cir- cir- circus then no. started then that Christmas, I can mm. remember at the end of 91, going into, yeah. into 92, that's because whenever cir- Circus started. Well, but, but and we, we all used to go. Brian Axe back then, you know, Dag, Paul Overfold, you know. Carl yeah. Cox, you know, that was like possibly the groundbreaking thing for a big scene where they were bringing big acts in because Chris only done it for it was like Chris done six hours of jail for ages. I know, for years. You know, for years, know. you know. And then he started to bring in the likes of the, the Love Duck brothers and the guys from Walmart yeah. and Birmingham, Birmingham and stuff. And um I just think Chris at that point was, again was the a fake Sasha. Yeah, you know, the fake Sasha. Possibly nobody about it, you know. But Chris, Chris was well ahead in, ahead in his time with Progressive House, you know. He really yeah. was, and, and and he took it from raw rave to piano house to Progressive House, and possibly yeah. case within three years, you know. And that was his yeah. flow, you know. That's yeah. his flow, and and there's some of it. Like I, I, I've had some amazing nights. I remember Chris heard play it, where there's people crying at the end of the night, 
you know, and they're walking down the lane, the steam's still rising off their back. You know, singing know. Boston music by Sister Sledge, you know. Uh, I, you know, I love Oh, Unforgettable yeah, things. Goosebumps thinking about it, you know, goosebumps thinking about it. Uh, and what he was feeling at the time, rest in peace, Chris, must have been phenomenal. You know, yeah. It must have been like, Unreal. oh, wow. Because it was like, you drop a song and it was like a football match going off. It was like, you know, Ranger Sheldon, uh-huh. and somebody scored a winner at the fucking, uh, you know, uh, it was not... time. <sighs> Electric, yeah. you know, yeah. just. Whoa. But like we we would even have went we would even have went and then cause circus was an all nighter we would have went to Kelly's first first and then and then just again. and then and then travelled down because like circus no, never opened the the late you know what I mean I can remember I morning. remember doing I remember doing a, a, an all nighter in the was it the ball of money roller rink or something yeah <laughs> yeah that's right. it was called it was called the ball of money uh ball now was it. It was, was it a bowl like, but, but it was a Bally roller, Bricks. like a roller yeah. disco. Bally Bricks. And we done it all, we done we it done all it. night around it. That's right, That's right, eh. When was that, Clint? That was, that was, that was early, early, early days. Right. That, was that was probably before circus, like. No, it was probably about mid, mid-91. Mid-91. Yeah. Because there used to be... A, we only a, got away with it once, like. Nah, there was a question... ever had one. There was a question centre, an equestrian centre, and Mac Felt used to do them as well. Uh, and again, as I say, once that the work is out of that, you know, and but, yeah. but I think I think we get, we get away we we wait long enough to appreciate the fact that we experience good times, you know. But we travel, oh, totally. we, tra- we travel the length and breadth of the country, and you were probably five che- checkpoints by the time you got there. Wasn't it? You know, know, it was crazy. You know, well, part of it checkpoints, sure. The, the point then, the point used to, used to go on a Sunday, you remember? Right, uh, yeah, it started off on a Sunday. It was a well. Sunday because they and didn't, they didn't want to go up against Kelly's. Mm-hmm. And then that's where it ended up then. I think the first time I ever done it was a Sunday. It was a bank right. holiday. And then and then the next time I was down was a Friday. Uh, and but a, great, was, a great legacy. That, that man said to me that it was the best club I ever played. So, yeah, you know, the point. he's saying that, the point I didn't want to go. And I never got mm-hmm. there because... I was either playing on Hennessy's and Derry or Marshall's and Sam Mills. And, you know, you took your work before <laughs> before, before anything else. <laughs> and that's the yeah. game. Um, but Ben Man is, is virtue to it. That, uh, now, I was lucky enough to do the, the, the Point End Festival and, get, and to do the Irish Masters with the Point End there, which was a great night too, Dave, wasn't it? Ah, that was um, brilliant. Wasn't it great just to see everybody out dancing? Aye, and giving it heaps, like. Aye, you know, the it, heads is all. It real you know. Not a hair down yeah. in his head, even the woman. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some foreheads. Oh, wigs. <laughs> but no, uh, no, that was great. and it was great to see all the DJs going together that night, you know, playing out. And I came for me. That was a fucking brilliant night for me. It's probably the best night I had last year. Please, you mentioned uh, Tony. Leave. You mentioned Tony De V there. I think his documentary is coming out at the end of the March. So is it? Did you have you heard about that? I think Fergie was on it. No, I Fergie had mentioned it to me that the, they were doing it, no, but uh, I don't don't know much about yeah. it now. Twenty twenty first or twenty second of March. It's been released on his that'll website. Be watch. So right. that'll be good. Mm-hmm. I think there's yeah, lots of old yeah, footage. We 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 brought Tony over um, the Kawara first. Um, nobody had even really heard of I've him. I've actually like. seen the flyer for that. Um, and we, I don't know, I don't know how we stumbled. On. I don't know how we stumbled. But he, he came and he done our first birth, birthday party at, at Kawater for us. Um, and then he was a regular for us all mm. the time. But whenever he finished on a sat on uh, in Kawater, he had to go and get the first flight on the Sunday morning to go back to London to play at Did trade, trade? <laughs> at, at Turnmills. Like, ah, uh, so. Uh, I know he was something yeah. else. Like he, he, so pioneered, he was, he was an old that, forward uh, thinking, hard house yeah. vibe. You know, he pioneered that. But that sound. I, mem- I remember the night he played in Kelly's. He, he was, he was another well EMC Sonic. guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was an old DMC guy back in the day. Like he uh, was in, he was in the DMCs I in England. Dan I seen something about it. So, yeah, yeah. What do you miss most about that that era, fellas? Like, what 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 do you miss most about that time? Probably DJing three or four nights a week. Or do you miss it? Because <laughs> <laughs> you were know, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You know, when it, you had different places to go. It, it 
it was it was probably the buzz and it was the it was it was the underground thing of it. Mm. You know, you were you were able, you know, when it, if you were in Belfast, you were able to walk through Belfast and and see somebody and go, oh, he's into it. Oh, so they, oh, he's uh, into right. it. Their clothes, you know, their, you know, their dress. I, you know, just from what they were wearing. Yeah, yeah. You you know what I mean? Or what 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 pair of boots they had on? You know what I mean? You just you just kind of knew. Um, whereas now it's very overground. You yeah, know, yeah. I, th- I think it kind of got that way whenever. You could walk out down an Esso garage and buy a cream compilation, like you yeah, know, that wasn't uh, yeah. really what it was all about, you know. T- taking it back to tracks, you know, it, it was it was a secret, it was a secret organization, wasn't it? Really, yeah. Aye, it was, but T- you know, it, it was it was just something else. Yeah, so it was. But then we we don't know because we're a bit longer in the tooth. That could be the same for young ones coming up here now that are going to the Telegraph and and, just, and yeah. hearing all these kind of different acts. You know, mm. it's it's just the generations moving on. You know what I mean? And me and me and yeah. Ray's lucky enough still to be catching a couple of gigs here. Yeah, and there, you know? yeah, totally. And what's your totally. what's your like? What's your thoughts on the sort of how it has evolved into the today's scene? Like, what, like, what's your thoughts on the scene today? Well, it, it always had to evolve. If it didn't evolve, it would, would have been stale and it would have disappeared. A bit like Ray. There. <laughs> keep talking. You can you can keep talking. We'll get him back on. Yeah, and look, it always had to evolve. You know what I mean? And 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 as I said earlier in in the interview, there, you know, it, it was. It, it was just a, a, it was just a thing that we all get caught up in in those early days that we didn't think was going to last, and and we're still here talking about it after all these years, and it's still going on. And and house music and trance and techno and dance music in general is very prominent and and right across the board from radio stations to TV ads to you know like you've even got bicep on the BMW ad you know what I mean yeah. that, that that would never have happened years ago you know what I mean but it's just because yeah. it's it's just accepted now um as as a musical genre whereas in the early days it was kind of snubbed a bit you know what I mean you you, you know think like you wouldn't have got you wouldn't have heard dance music as as uh, on ads and on TV and in films as much as what you would now, you know what I mean? Over the last yeah. few years, it just it's just become such a big monster worldwide, you know. And do you think, like with the crowd, um, like I know the, the numbers are sort of in Australia, like the numbers are sort of dying, like obviously not as good as they used to be, um, and clubs are closing, and they're, I suppose they're closing all over the world. But yeah. do you think that's just a you know the generational gap, or do you think it's something else? I I honestly think I honestly think since since lockdown the the goalposts changed. You know what I mean? And and I think a, a lot a lot of that younger generation are um, looking at you know the big events where they can go and they can hear three or four of their favorite headline DJs in one go. Back in our day, it was it was very much a weekly, you know, outing where where you went to the club and it wasn't costing an absolute fortune. Like like to go to some of them big festivals or some of them big nights, it's big money now. Whereas you could have went to a weekly club night and paid a fiver in, you you know what I mean, yeah. and, a, and, a, and a couple of drinks. But now it's a whole it's a whole big ethos night out instead of of going to a weekly club night the way that you used two years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. And do you think? Like what I've noticed here as well is, like the young ones are coming through and, and not drinking. There's like a real f- focus on health. Like there's a lot of yeah. Like they don't like there's a lot of people that don't drink anymore. There's a lot of people that don't touch drugs anymore, and that's yeah. that same. You're back. You're, you're back. You're right? Right. But is that is that Sorry. is that similar back home as well? Because I know it is in Australia. Yeah, like that's yeah. massive. Like yeah. it's a big thing here. No, I I, I definitely think so. I, de- I definitely think like. <clears throat> Like I was right. I've been resident in Thompson's on a Sunday for I don't know twenty or twenty more than well, twenty five years. Right? Certainly, I uh, you know what I mean. And I definitely seen a real shift after after the lockdown because the 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 regular crowd that was coming on a weekly basis every Sunday, whenever whenever we went into lockdown and, and reopened on the Sundays, that old crowd had gone. That they, they, they had. They they had either moved on or 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 had kids or or built 
built a, a, a bar in their in their garden, one of them garden yeah. bars, and, and that's where they're all going now. So it left it left this real young generation, like the real young ones that that wanted to go out and experience this kind of clubbing aspect. But I I definitely think they're they're not programmed the way the way it was years ago, where you went religiously to Kelly's on a Saturday night because you loved it and all your mates went and blah blah blah. They're they're looking at, totally they're looking at the bigger stages. I uh, they're looking at the bigger stages and and looking at the, what's on the telegraph or what's gonna happen at Bell Sonic or what's gonna happen at, at, at here and they're looking at the big lineups and going, Well, if we spend the extra money we can go and hear all the DJs that that, that, yeah. that we want to hear instead of just they going to like a normal club. Yeah, that, that's it. Because because it's costing so much to do it. You know, like even it all boils down to everything. There's a whole mm. knock-on effect from from taxis to freaking the, the, well, the, the whole thing. It's which has to do awesome. a lot. It has to do a lot with the baby boom that we were involved in whenever we were born, and then there was that lull that we never in around 2011, and places like tracks and all had to shut because there just wasn't the people to go there anymore. You know, there wasn't that young generation coming through. Yeah. But nowadays, well, well, now we've got now we have got that generation back again. And they're all up for going out, but they're up for going out to bigger festivals. Things are saving up their money now to go to like, like the Creamfields or ADE or places like that. They're going all over the world. You know, to, you know, literally they are going out all over the world, um, especially the younger GT generation. Um, but the, the, the clubbing generation from over here back then was like it was just all local, wasn't it? Really, you know, you, they weren't going to the likes of uh-huh. you know, and they were early, early late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. They weren't going to. The, Clubs in Liverpool or wherever, some 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 may doubt that it wasn't no. in, in any big influx, you know. Um, but I yeah, we have that. You know, have that value. You know, if, if 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 you if you strike it and, and work it work it right, you could probably get the Liverpool return cheaper than what it would cost me in a taxi from here to Belfast and back. I My mate what, Kendall says you, the same thing. You know I mean? it, cost, it cost him it cost him <laughs> more money to go from where he lives in Kirby into Liverpool City Centre and a taxi back cost them more money there than it is they fly to Belfast. Isn't that crazy? There you go. You know? Wow. Uh, Mental. You know? It's mad, like. That's it's the mad. evolution. And what about the, the technology evolution, boys, from the SLs to today? <laughs> well, that's certainly, that's probably certainly helped me on. <laughs> <laughs> You get you get people complaining about it. Um I I actually really like it. You know what I mean? I you can because do more. we put the whole way through from the vinyl to the, the oh, CDs okay. to the, yeah. the, the, the yeah, early you, USB. You've more scope you've more scope of things really, haven't you? I you you can you can do loads more on them. Now there, there is people go, Oh, that's not real DJ and blah yeah, blah blah. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You have to move on. We all but, know that. You know, it, 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 it seems to their own. You, you know what I mean? Now, saying that, I, I've i got a lot more guys coming to me um, looking to do vinyl lessons instead of right. the digital stuff. They've already got their digital decks at home and they've kind of worked them out and, and can use them okay. And they want to learn, they want to go back and, and learn the vinyl yeah, aspect good. of that's it. Good. That's um, good. So I've, I've got... I've got a lot more guys come to me that maybe has records land in the roof space or or had kids and, and they packed the decks away for a load of years and, and they've gotten back out again and they're just wanting Brilliant. to kind of like reconnect with them, you know. Um and I, I love going out the back in the studio and turn the vinyls on. You know, if I had the choice to turn the digital stuff on or the vinyl stuff, it's the vinyl stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And again, the amount of records you've well, collected over the years, the amount of gems, you know, the amount of gems you've collected over the years that, and, and you Knowledge that yeah, you, know, you, mentioned, you mentioned earlier on about Freaky Dreamer, Gary Josh Freaky Dreamer. Like, what a song! Now, that, that came out, pop yeah, promotions, the white label pop promotions way back, you know. And that was like the first and time I'd heard it. Not too many people had it, like, no, it's the same, man. That was like, you know, and that's how you, you differentiate a good DJ from, from a, a, you know, a DJ running a mill DJ, you know, boys are right getting the tunes first, yeah. And that's what put you, that's what put you yeah. up there was the songs you played, you know. It wasn't about how you looked or totally. you know, how, how you danced on top of the stage or if you swung. How many followers you had on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. How many followers you bought, that, that, many followers you bought yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a big thing, isn't it, really? 
that's a big thing now, isn't it? So, totally. If, uh, I wouldn't even know what site to go on because I'd be fucking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Raymond, do you remember what your first your first record you ever bought was? And Gleef? Oh fuck! Probably a seven inch or something. I yeah, bought. I think Ma- I madness or something. Well, uh, before that, I think Madness. it was a record, probably, Sh- aye. I think my mate was Shaggin Stevens, not just as groovy as fucking Gleaves there. <laughs> this old... It wasn't Rod Stewart, no? Of no. <laughs> You're fucking dead, I would then I would then, the, I would then because, because I was into hip-hop before the whole rave thing, thing started, um, I kind of went from, like, all the Def Jam stuff, like Public Enemy and LFOJ yeah. and Tribe Called Quest and De La Soul. I was into all of that oh, really, yeah. really early days. Um, and then There's I kind of progressed in from that in the... Yeah, and then I would kind of went into the Electro Sound stuff, which was kind of hip-hop and hip-house that was merging yeah. into this kind of dance thing. And that's where kind of it brought me kind of along and on that kind of road, you know. The sort of Doug Glazy yeah. and stuff like that, like, let it roll. Yeah, all the hip house stuff. Yeah, which yeah. is fucking, yeah. man, that, that's tight. So that, that, was, kind of, uh, that kind of bridged me into that. What was the, the maddest thing you've seen while DJing? The craziest uh-huh. thing? <laughs> but it, in, in circus one night, this boy must have been, like, really thirsty, right? And uh, he, he lifted the smoke flare, oh. right? And, and started drinking it, right? <laughs> at, at, at the front of the stage, right? And then he must have realized that it, it, it wasn't water, it wasn't, and, and he started to be sick. And because he started to be sick, everybody oh. around him started to be sick. Oh. And it was like, <laughs> It was like a full, everybody was just throwing up all around. I'm like, I was going, what the hell's going on out there? Like, but I don't know. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Rimmin, what's uh, yours? Fuck, I don't know. There's so so many really that happened all over the fucking years, but possibly the, the most funniest thing, probably I got hit by a batter sausage one night with red sauce on it and Kelly's. And I'd actually sort of just glanced up, <laughs> up at the crowd and, and I kind of seen it coming, just flipping at me. The next minute, just bang. And we were just starting to record a tape. On a DAP machine, and a fucking I think it was Sun Sunbeam High Adventure I was playing, and uh, it just fucking hit me clean on the beak and bounced clean onto the record maps. A fucking stunker, you know what I mean? Uh, all of that and probably they used to they used to they used to give you like a which is called now a rider, you know what I mean? But Kelly's was used to give me and Big Man twenty four harp and then say twelve cider, um, just to keep us keep us going, you know, but. Nobody cleaned the DJ. It wasn't even the DJ box. It was just like fucking two turntables set up and four police blocks. Um, so there just to be like tin sitting around and you know what I mean? And I yeah. grabbed, it, grabbed the tin, thought she got my tin of heart. Stop it. <laughs> Full of cigarette butts. Oh, fuck. Talk about the book when I done that. Oh, uh, booked over the side of the mixer. Done that at some stage. <laughs> rough, rough. Um, <laughs> he's, both, he's both played different parts of the world, but I want to talk about the the Northern Irish crowd, like, because we know it's it's the best in the world, like, we're not biased or anything. Like, what what do you guys reckon? Yeah, back back in the day, they were they were just nuts. It was just they were right up for it. And I, I think I think it made, it it made it even more special here because you back then in in the early nineties, it was Northern Ireland was divided. Like, you oh, know, it was it was. It was totally divided, and and that that in that in that space in those early rave days, people came to forget about the troubles in Northern Ireland and and mm. and, and get on with it. It didn't. It just didn't matter, and I think that's what made it even more special because people just were just let letting loose. Yeah, you know, I mean, had enough. You didn't have enough. It didn't anyway. really matter where you were from then. You know, you know, but but before that whole rave thing. You know, you had to watch where you went or, or what area of town you went or what Isn't part it? of Belfast you went into. Mm. You see, whenever that whole rave thing started, to, nobody, nobody cared. It was uh, like almost the, youth, the end of, that of youth, having yeah. to worry about it. Yeah, that youth, that youth sort of movement that was involved in, especially yeah. the dance scene uh, or, or the going out scene, um, totally broke that divide. 
They really did. I, I think one day Marshall totally. and Sam, Sam Mills totally. and like, right. I, like I was brought up in Corian and Monday Hall and we were going to places like Ballycoman and, and Sam Mill or Ballycoman and Sturban to after parties after Sam Mills and I end up marrying Gillian from Sturban. Um we've got Cassie as a baby. Well she's nineteen now, but you know, it just goes to show you that that's the way. And Rhonda as well. Rhonda, Rhonda was a Catholic and I was a Protestant. Jordan as well as my son, who now lives in Australia. But go that, that's the that's the way things was. You know, um, for our I think our generation who yeah the atmosphere and well, 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 we grew we grew up it just watch, watching the TV. Boundaries, I think we grew up watching the TV, um, and seeing the bombings and the killings and each side every day. And I think we got to a stage where we thought to ourselves, you know what, enough's enough, you know. And we we wanted to try and make a difference, you know, no matter what was there or who you're talking to, or because it, you know it was it was. Um, quite tense, you know, and, and even up through the rave scene as well, that still continued. You yeah. know, that still continued on in the backdrop of the troubles, you know, but we, I think that we, we're now 50. No, I am 50, not one. Um, and I think that it's because of our generation that, that made that difference. Totally. Uh, moved Definitely planted a seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But yeah, I remember yeah, like, going, to, going to Kelly's, you know, steady from 98, 90, probably seven ninety eight right through to 2007 before I came out to Australia. The, the the atmosphere week in, week out was, was just fucking phenomenal. Like it was just something mm -hmm. else. Like, Bouncing. and I've been clubbing Bouncing. all around the world. Nothing comes close to that crowd, that the atmosphere. atmosphere. Uh, yeah, totally. Nothing um, else. The Scottish it's is unreal. very similar. All right, lads. So we're, so from here, where do you see the scene going? Like, uh, from here on in? Um, I I can see it still thriving away. You know what I mean? Like you know, like I I I lucky enough to get to go to Ibiza and, and get to play every every time I'm over. Um, I do it under the my, my other alias Jonas Blake. Um, and I'm still making loads of music under that alias. I've got a couple of Glee things to come out. So, you know, I'm still plugging away at it. I can I can see it, it moving on. You know, like if you if you look at the UK UK charts. It's full of dance music, man. Yeah. It's full, full of dance music. And I just don't mean trance. It, there's, like, there's drum and bass in there. There's house. There's deep house. There's, there's all sorts. So I I think it's going to continue on. Like, you know, what is going to come along, you know, it probably will do its usual cycle where it goes into kind of more rock bands and does that. And then... It, Flips round to your hip hop and your R&B, and then the dance will become. But that 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 kind of works for dance music as well, because then dance music then goes underground and makes makes it cooler again for it to come back up. Swings around about. So, yeah. I it, look, it always has to change or go stale. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the minute, dance music's very prominent everywhere. If you if you ask me, like you know, it, you know you, they're putting on them big big shows uh, for Bell Sonic and all. But like. Like big dance DJs on it, you know what I mean? You know, and then the next one would be like a like a massive band. So you know, it, I can see it it, it surviving and, and thriving. Hopefully, you know what I mean. But you know, the the way I kind of always look at it is if, if as long as young ones, as long as one part of the young kind of fraternity is in the dance music, they'll find their own channels, whether it be. If, if they like hard style or they like techno or they like house or they like trance or they, you know it, it always evolves you know what I mean so I yeah. I can see it I can see it plodging on don't know don't know uh, as much with the weekly club nights I think it's definitely the the goalposts have shifted into that kind of festival frequency yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. you know big time you know right but there still is club nights going on all over the place, but I just don't think as many as what we would have had back in the day when we would have had the coach, Kelly's, the men. Yeah, frequency of you all know, the you, clubs, you had, yeah. You had all big, sorts. big clubs all over the country. I think I think that them days have kind of dwindled cool. away and it's it's yeah. it's moved into that kind of big production night out yeah. kind of thing. Yep. What was the first festival think, you ever went to? God. My first festival. Was Planet Love? Was it? Or else Gatecrasher at Lotherton Hall? That was in '98. Planet Love, I think, for me. Oh, was right, it? Yeah. 
That's where I met. That's where I met X Ray. <laughs> I met X Ray so at Plant Love the first I, time. Yeah. I met my wife at Plant Love. <laughs> you were off your fist. Nineteen ninety nine. I didn't make it that year because I was over in Ibiza. Um, my name was on the flyers, but I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't make it. But uh, that was was that the year it was down at the. Uh, uh, was that the first year? Shane's it was Castle. No, it wasn't Shane Castle. It was down at the. No, no I think it was at North Corner. Was it not? No, I'm nearly sure it was at the. I can't remember. What do you call it? Uh, ninety nine. Loch Ney, somewhere down near Loch Ney. No, that was that was the first one ever. Loch Ness. A Aye. Van Dyke done it. Where was I that remember then? playing on it. What year was that? 90... No, that, that was that was way before that, Ray. So it was. Aye, what, that was what, year, what, what year was that? that? What year did it start? Oh, fuck, I don't know. I thought it started in 1999. I thought it started in 97. It started. No, no, it could have been 96 or right, right over there. Uh, 96, uh, 97. Uh, uh, no, nah, it definitely wasn't that. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm nearly sure it was within the 99 mark. I think the first one was 99 and the last one was 2011. Anyway, we can fact check don't that know. Up. Don't know. Don't know. Pete's going to fact check that. Planet Love has been uh, <laughs> the first. The, this was the first Planet Love, according to Wikipedia, was in 2011. Oh, no. 1998. Oh, 1998. 1998. Right, there you yeah. go. 1998. Well, was it? And the home was Shane's Castle and then it says Knott's Corner. Um, well, there was one at Loch Ness. The Loch Ness. Before I that, was, was that the first one, Glee, wasn't it? That was the first one. Uh, yeah, because it was it, it poured down. It was, <laughs> it was wet. There's no uh, worse. There's no yeah. worse than a, than a festival snowy. <laughs> no. Unless you're in there. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Brilliant. Um, so, boys, any gigs coming up? Lately, or in in the future, are you playing together soon? Are you what, what's on the horizon? Well, we actually have a couple coming up together. Have we, Leaf? We've uh... yes, we've got we've got the fundraiser for um, Fergie, Fergie, Big Fergie, yeah. not the, not yeah. not the Fergie, the... Lauren Fergie, uh, Fergie, Fergie. Fergie. Warren Point. Well, tell me more about that. Are you Yeah, that, uh, that's... Um, it's in Warren Point. Yeah. Um. It's got a whole host of Northern Iron DJs on it that I have. Ne- I've never seen a, a Northern Iron DJ line up like that. Yeah, that's really good. Like 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 that. How they've pulled it together. Um. And it's, yeah, Nor- it's the re- raise Nor- funds Nor- for them. And it's in a club I've never been in. In more a point. Yes, we have. Yeah. To me, me and you actually so, played uh, this place. We, me and you actually played in this place along with Stevie Trainer. Remember, you gave me a lift down in Belfast. It was called something else at that point. It's the same place. <laughs> Oh, was it? Ah, it's the same place. Remember me and you played at it? Is it? Aye. Is, uh, is that where it's in? It was Shook Street back then. Now it's called the Skylight Rooms. Right. Hey, right. Uh, right. Okay, I've got you. Remember you picked me up got in Belfast. Me I, I, I just, is that, is, so is that the place that we're playing? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's now right. called the Skylight Rooms. Right. Like pizza way now. <laughs> right, because I... I I did um I did a thing down in Drogheda there a couple of weeks ago. Me and uh, John Chitini, it was a NAOS Northeast Old School oh, yes, birthday yeah. party, and there was loads. Of, uh, it was it was really really good, and there was loads of ones at that are are traveling up are for that up. for that gig mm-hmm. and, and more important. Yeah. So when is the fundraiser, uh, leave? When is it? it it's the fourth of May. Mm-hmm. Started yeah. the fourth of May. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Fourth of May. And where do people get yeah. tickets for that? You can, get, you can them. get them online, or I think even there's paper tickets. I, I think Dilly was selling them in, in, uh, yeah, in the, the record shop and that. Yeah. yeah, there's paper tickets, or you can get them all, all off the site. Like, but uh, it's uh, there's been it's he's pulled some line up together for it. You know, it's exactly, great yeah. to see that everybody's supporting Big Fergie totally. because I I can remember like Big Fergie coming and playing in Kawater and, and all yeah. and an exit. I can remember him from. He was a lovely big lad, like. I'm just going to get DJ. the. I'm just going to get the lineup up here. Oh, just yeah. so we go. Are we sure? Um. Let me see. Yeah. So there's Mandy Reid, Gleave himself, myself, Craig Dazel, Tizer, Dilly, Mark Wesley, Lee Paul, Led, Colin McGrew, Tom Tom, Magic Fly, uh, Terry Looney, uh, David O'Reilly, Di David O'Reilly, sorry, uh, Brew Jemo. Eddie, Wardo, uh, Tom McLeod, let me see, 
Let's just do the zoom down in here, lads. Sorry about that. Um, Lenny and Noel, Mirzi, back to back, Fisco Shaka, S Mac, uh, DJ Maximus, Johnny M, uh, Patrick Gormley, uh, Stevie T, and Toshi, and the MCs are Johnny M. 15 minutes set. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's over, th it's over three rooms. <laughs> so it's three, three rooms in this place. So it's like, oh, uh, and it's, it's on from six o'clock to two o'clock. Yeah, I'm sorry if I missed it. Any of the DJs there, MCs, uh, MC DC and Doodley's in there too as well. Johnny M. I think that's everybody. And it's twenty quid in, and you can get the tickets on Glister as well. And if you just want to scan that, there you go. Uh, you'll see it. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> but we will. We will. If we can, we'll we will post a link for this podcast because it's not for another eight weeks. Um, so if we can do that there, that, that'd be big help too. I have a message here from uh, Scott Mack from Chill FM. Wants to know if he's still got that uh, voicemail recording on your phone. <laughs> yeah, big bastard, yeah. That was a cracker right now. Back in, that's a cracker. Pierce Morgan there. Pierce Morgan there hacked into my uh, <laughs> phone message and changed change me. What they call to this here, like when they go here, hello, voicemail. it's right here. I'm a DJ, I'm an old school DJ. I love old school. Leave a message if you want. Bastard. <laughs> These guys are ringing me going, man, that's a fucking brilliant fucking voicemail you have. And I went and listened to it. It's that big bastard there. I fucking changed my voicemail. <laughs> we were up at his like house stoning the crows channel. and he went to the toilet and I got his phone and, and recorded the voicemail again. Hello, my name's X Ray. I'm, I'm an old school DJ. I love old school. Leave a message. <laughs> <laughs> It was days, I think, before you come back to me. Uh, <laughs> that was a cracker. Cracker, right? wasn't it? Pitch All right, lads. Was on. Brilliant. Great to chat to you. I love, I love, it's good to catch up, number one. It's good to hear the stories, and there's lots of stuff there yeah. that lots of us didn't know. And, um, uh, Jesus, we'll, we'll, we could talk for hours. Totally. We will, and we did. I have to get me, um, I'll, I have to get me bed before 12. I'm going to turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> Um, brilliant lads. All right, well, I'll uh, but we'll speak to you soon. See you later, Pete. Thank you, All right, lads. Thanks again. Thanks, All right, Glenn. See you soon. See you, Ray. Bye bye. Bye bye.